the primetime host of the 2016 Rio Olympics, the record 11th time that he will be the primetime host for an Olympics on NBC. Every single one of them he has been the primetime host for since 1992. He is Bob Costas. How are you, Bob? Good, Rich. How you doing? I am better for chatting with you. Thank you for calling in, as always. Um, I'm just I'm just happy to provide some therapy if that's what you need. Well, you know what? Uh, I, I'm wondering what um, what you and the folks at NBC might need because, uh, in all honesty, the narrative is that Rio is not ready for these games. What what can you tell mm -hmm. us about Rio's preparedness and readiness for these summer games, Bob? Well, I don't want to overstate my insider's level of expertise. I've been there. I've spoken with Olympic officials, but this was a few months ago. I leave very shortly for Rio, and we'll try to get a better sense of it before it starts. But I'm certainly aware of most of what's been said and written leading up to it. And while people can say, oh, every Olympics faces some issues and some controversies, and that's almost literally true. There may have been a handful that didn't, but most have had their issues leading up. But in my experience, there's never been an Olympics that has this array of of problems. And it leads you to say that if they have all of these individual problems, and if there's such unrest within the government, and if the economy is in shambles, and if they need a nearly billion dollar infusion of funds from the federal government just to meet their various payrolls, just to pay key personnel, including security people, doesn't this indicate that the whole thing might be in some sense dysfunctional? Mm. That's not an alarmist view or a pessimist view. That's just a realistic question to ask. And I don't think we're going to know the answers for sure until these Olympics begin to play out. But I do intend to pose these questions to Brazilian Olympic officials, to Tomas Bach of the IOC, uh, to people who spend their lives covering the Olympics. Um, that's their main beat, people like Alan Abrahamson of the Los Angeles Times and Phil Hirsch and people like that. Um, the, the, these questions seem to be on people's minds almost as much as the upcoming competition. But, fingers crossed, if the competition can come off with relatively little disruption and intrusion from this array of issues, then what always happens is people get captivated by the Michael Phelpses and the Usain Bolts and the emerging new stars like Simone Biles. And that's obviously the main reason we're there is to present that in as dramatic and interesting a fashion as possible. And our hope is that we're able to do that at least 99% of the time. But we've got to at least acknowledge all these issues before the Olympics start and then hope against hope that they don't intrude upon the Olympics, at least not too much. Well, what is NBC and NBC Sports Management saying to you and the rest of the crew that's going to be down there covering it? Uh, are you getting emails about preparedness and about security and things of that nature, Bob? Well, NBC has its own security apparatus in addition to um, Brazilian military and police forces and in addition to IOC security. And there's a coalition of, of nations. The United States helps out to some extent with that. So there are various layers. And, yeah, there, there have been briefings. Uh, about that sort of thing. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.